Hello friends, it's that time of the year again. It's the Whiskey of the Year. So what is my Whiskey of the Year 2022? Well, everything's been getting more and more expensive. Quality has been going down. Everything's a bit crap, really. So no Whiskey of the Year this year. <sighs> Thanks for watching. You didn't think I was serious, did you? It is true that a lot has changed for the worse over the last 12 months. I think when I did this video last year, my last Whiskey of the Year video, the Diageo price hikes were still kind of a rumour. There were crazy prices flying around. No one was really sure if it's going to happen or not. Turns out that the higher crazy numbers were actually real, which I didn't really expect, if I'm honest. But we've also had a lot of really great things coming from new distilleries. We have more independent and small scale choices than we've had in a long, long time. And we've had some really great stuff in the last year. So let's start off with some honorary mentions, because there are there's more than one thing that I want to give praise to this time. And I have quite a few honorary mentions this year. First one that I want to start off with is from my local distillery, St George's, the English Whiskey Company, and that's the English Sherry Butts. The English Sherry Butts was a fantastic whiskey that I'm sure has flown right under most people's radar, and that's a real shame, although not too much of a shame because it's a very small batch and it would sell out very quickly if it got the recognition it deserved. But the English Whiskey Sherry Butts release was the first time that I'd really had an English whiskey, and I didn't have to make any excuses. There was no need to say it's very good for young whiskey. With the Sherry Butts, it's just good. It's mature. It shows some really exceptional sherry without overpowering the malt. And I think that it stands its ground against any 10-ish year old craft presented single malt from England, or Scotland, English whiskey has arrived. And following on from that, there's really been an explosion in new craft distilleries in England over the last 12 months. It's something that's been building up for a long time, but there are so many distilleries out here in England now, and almost all of them are producing exceptional stuff. And one of those that I want to mention to give another honorary mention is the Lakes Distillery up in Cumbria. I'll be reviewing the Lakes Whiskey Makers Reserve number 5 really soon, and although I don't think it's quite on the same level as the English Whiskey Company English Sherry Butts, it's an incredibly well-made, very heavily sherried whiskey from England. I think that the Lakes Distillery are really carving out their own little niche in the whiskey world, and I think that very soon they're going to really be embarrassing some of the more established whiskey companies. I also want to give an honorary mention to Le Chig, in particular the Le Chig 10, which is the, the standard peated expression from Tobermory on the Isle of Mole. Le Chig 10 absolutely could be my whiskey of the year in its own right. I would have no argument with anyone that says that Le Chig 10 is their whiskey of the year. It's a great peated malt at a really great price, and I think that Le Chig is now getting the recognition that it really deserves. But, and this is another one that I'm going to be reviewing very soon, I also wanted to mention the Le Chig Rioja. So that is a no-age statement expression from Le Chig. It's like the little brother, the cheaper little brother of the Le Chig 10. And if you haven't had it, it's much, much better than you would expect from a red wine no-age statement whiskey. It's a really good whiskey at a really good price. Also want to mention blended scotch in general, I think that the blended scotch category has really stepped up its game over the last 12 months. In particular, I want to mention another one that I'm going to be reviewing very soon, and that's the M&S Marks and Spencer's 8-year-old blend. I'll get to a review on that really soon, but in short, it doesn't really stand out in any way, but it's just well-made, well-priced, good blended scotch. And the same goes for the Black Bottle Alchemy series, all four of those releases. I think we've had this problem in the past where 
blended whiskey tends to either be crap or expensive and there wasn't really much in the middle at all but now we're really seeing with a lot of releases that it can be decent and fairly priced all in one we're really starting to see that in a few current blended scotch releases Another new distillery that I want to give an honorary mention to, and this is another one that I'm going to be reviewing very soon in the early part of 2023, is Glen Wivis. So Glen Wivis is a brand new distillery. They literally just released their first three-year-old whiskey a few months ago, and it's one that's had a little bit of recognition at the Oswas. But in my opinion, Glen Wivis not only shows some excellently made malted barley spirit and some excellent sherry but glenn with us that 2018 vintage it's the most mature three-year-old whiskey that i've ever tried it has some really interesting manzanilla-esque chamomile notes i don't actually know if they've used any manzanilla sherry they definitely use sherry but i get those manzanilla notes from that release and i just think if glenn with us is this good at three years old it's going to be another one that really upsets the established distilleries when they start to push out the age statements. One last honorary mention, and that's going to be Spice King. Spice King 12-year-old, which is a whiskey that myself and you guys, the, the frequent viewers, all know all about by now. It's a, a, whis a blended malt produced by Weems Malts, representing the independent bottlers and blenders. Great ABV great flavours from a really good blended malt. So here we have it. That's all of the honorary mentions out of the way. This is it. This is the moment of truth. This is the whiskey that I have chosen to hide my whiskey of the year, 2022. It's the Cutty Sark Prohibition Edition. It might not be the highest graded whiskey that I've had this year. I think that's probably going to go to the Brewer that I celebrated with after I passed the 1,000 subscribers mark. But am I going to buy a whole bottle of Brewer? Are you going to buy a whole bottle of Brewer? Probably not. It's not the kind of thing that most people buy. And if they do, they're going to be scared to drink it. A lot of people aren't even going to open it. And that's why I've chosen Cutty Sark Prohibition Edition as my Whiskey of the Year 2022. It's an appropriately priced whiskey which is made for drinking and sharing and enjoying. It's decent quality at an amazing price. More than anything, I think that it's an outright embarrassment that it exists to the distilleries who are claiming that they need to charge us more and more for less and less. It proves that those distilleries that are saying that they can't give us a good presentation are talking crap. We all know who they are, sitting there, counting their money, going, oh, 43% is all we can manage. And we're going to have to put the price up so we can continue to run the chill filtration machine. Oh, we're so poor. Absolutely not. No, jog on. If... Cutty Sark can give us 50% ABV and non-chill filtration for £23, then everyone else can. If not for 23 for 33 If not for 33 at least for 43 And going back to Cutty Sark Prohibition Edition, it's not just cheap and well presented. I think it's really enjoyable. Standard drinking whiskey with great flavours too. It's, it's a great product that I enjoy drinking. And I'm going to be buying it again. Obviously, there is a little bit of a agenda behind my choice this year. But I make absolutely no apologies for that. We need to be looking at appropriately priced, value priced, value for money, good quality offerings. More and more distilleries aren't giving us that. Prices are going to go up across the range. They will be going up buy £5 here, maybe £10 there. That's understandable, that's inflation, that's the nature of war on the doorstep of Europe. It's the nature of supply and demand and supply chains and industry and business. But we all know that some companies are using that as an excuse and some companies just want to offer us 
poor value because they've always gotten away with it. So I make no apologies for going for something that might not be the best whiskey in the world, but it's probably the whiskey that I feel that I have had best value for money for this year. While I've got you here though, I do want to talk about something else. In the past, several whiskey tubers have put criteria on the whiskey that they review, like Ralphie boycotting no aid statement whiskey for a while, and I'd like to propose something similar for 2023. I think that for the, the coming year, we should all give up paying over recommended retail price. So if a shop charges over RRP, forget it. Even if it's the only shop that sells that whiskey, if it's a long row red and they want £150 for it and you know that that's not the price that Springbank put on it, leave it, forget it, let them keep it. There are other great whiskies out there that you can spend your money on and get value. And more than anything, auctions. If someone has clearly bought a whiskey just to take it off the market and then flip it back onto auction a matter of hours or days later and trying to sell it for more than recommended retail price, let them keep it. Let them make a loss. Because these people, these flippers, they are removing availability of a sizable percentage of the whiskey market now and they're driving prices up and they are parasites leeching off the whiskey drinkers. And I think that it's just a really unhealthy thing for whiskey drinkers, whiskey drinkers in the community and the industry as a whole. I think that it would be really good if we could knock a little bit of the wind out of the sails of those flippers to start to get pricing and availability a little bit more under control. Because you have to remember that every time someone buys a bottle of whiskey, a rare expression to put on their shelf probably, at auction for above RRP, it just, it gives that profit to that flipper and encourages and allows him to buy another dozen bottles that the whiskey drinkers won't get so that the actual whiskey drinkers can't have it. It's artificially creating demand and scarcity and artificially driving prices up. It's like a whiskey pump and dump. If you did this kind of thing with stocks and shares, you'd probably end up in prison. I am actually thinking of going a little bit of a step further than that though. And I'm not saying that everyone should do this because a lot of people are sensible and they have reasonably sized whiskey collections and they may need to buy more whiskey because they need something to drink. But I am thinking about having a little self-intervention on behalf of myself and the industry. And I've been thinking about this. It's, it really put it into my mind when we had that questionnaire that came along with the, the voting process at the Oswas, and it was all about how many bottles people have, how many they usually buy, and how many they intend to buy in the coming year. And I've been thinking about that. It's a really good point, and it's worth thinking about. And I've been thinking, do I actually need to buy any whiskey at all? I think that I certainly have enough to drink and review for the next year in my collection. Realistically, probably for the next five years. So what I'm proposing is for the next 12 months, I'm just going to take my foot off the accelerate a little bit, ease off the gas and slow things down a bit in the whiskey purchasing department. Especially seeing as we now are, I believe, officially in a period of recession and it's not getting better anytime soon. A lot of us are going to be finding our wallets lighter over the next few months, possibly years. And the, the constant inflating of the whiskey bubble isn't good for the industry or the community. So what I'm aiming for is probably no whiskey purchased in the next 12 months. I'm not saying that you guys have to do this as well, because some of you will have reasonably sized collections and you can buy what you want with your money. But me personally... I think it makes sense to slow things down a bit. So let me know what you think. Are you going to be buying less whiskey or more whiskey? Or perhaps you can't afford the whiskey that you want to buy? Or you're looking at different options? Do you have a whiskey collection which realistically you could admit is more than you need? Let me know what you think. Is it crazy? A little bit of food for thought there. 
I do worry a little bit about the independents and the small distilleries and uh, the independent local bottle shops, but they'll they'll be okay. My channel is not that influential that I'm going to put independents out of business by encouraging people to consider if they really need to spend that money on whiskey that's going to probably sit on the shelf next to the other bottles that they haven't opened yet. Looking at things that might scupper my plan, Karchis is always something that we all look forward to every year. I might buy one Karchis bottle if Black Bottle Alchemy series comes out with another interesting release. I might buy one of those, but honestly, do I need it? Probably not. I think 2023 is going to be the year to crack some of those dusties. So that is the the late Whiskey Lock Christmas message out of the way. Hope you've enjoyed this and found some of my recommendations and honourable mentions interesting. Let me know what you think and what was your Whiskey of the Year 2022. Stay safe and thanks for watching. Cheers.